Welcome back to Focus on Five, where we're celebrating 70 years of WNEM TV5. Please enjoy this look back at TV5's rich history and legendary broadcasters that made us who we are today. When Shamanica went missing, a sense of security was shattered. It's dangerous now. It's dangerous for the kids to be out. As the search intensified, the community rallied and vowed to protect its kids. But these babies got nobody but us. They got nobody but us. And then, three days later, the little girl's body was found in a Saginaw churchyard. But there was a sketch of a suspect, and police were optimistic. Yes, we're very happy as far as where it's going, but it may take another week, it may take another 10 days, it may take a month. But eventually, after Shamanica's body was found here at this church, people began to forget about her. Time moved on, and a community tried to do the same. But the detective who investigated her murder didn't. He couldn't. And, and I've said, and, and I will say it again, you know, um, I feel I failed, I failed Shamanica. Retired for more than two years now, Roy Walton still can't put this case down. He worked it and lived it for almost a decade. I don't feel there's anything that I couldn't have done that I didn't do. It just obviously wasn't enough. And that, yeah, that will for always, always bother me. This thick case folder went home with him, even followed him into retirement. And inside it, he's convinced, is the answer to the question nagging him and a community for these 11 years. I'm certain I know who, who killed Shamanica Brown. Walton's work led him to a suspect, a man he won't name on the record. He thought there was enough evidence for an arrest. The prosecutor didn't. And then, several months ago, that main suspect died. And dying with him, Walton thinks, was the last best chance to solve this mystery. But I strongly feel that the person responsible for this now is answering to a higher authority. And for that, I feel, I feel some comfort, yes. Yet also still some lingering frustration. What if I had done this or that? I've had people say, well, listen, Roy, you've done absolutely everything you could have done with this, more than you had to do, uh, let it go. Yeah, that's, no, I can't, I, I can't do that. Saginaw school officials say they're doing the best they can to maintain the playgrounds under their jurisdiction but want parents and kids to keep one basic fact in mind. Parents need to understand they have a responsibility. At this playground, the school removed equipment, took it out when it broke down and became unusable and unsafe. At others, posted signs clearly point out the rules. Kids must be supervised and use the equipment the way it was intended. The key thing is, is that the playgrounds are developed for supervision. They're not there just to send kids over and say, hey, go play on the playground, because it's there. They require and need supervision. Another thing to remember is that playgrounds are designed for certain age groups. Most preschool kids are too small for a lot of this equipment and probably shouldn't play here, supervised or not. There you go, yeah, good job. Come on. Harry Redeemer was on the playground today, keeping an eye on the kids in his summer program. He's with a group called Mr. Rogers Just Say No. He and his staff of volunteer moms agree with the need to watch the kids like a hawk when they're playing here. That's very true, uh, exactly. Uh, some of them, uh, they'll be swinging and, and children are walking by with the swing, the smaller ones, and they'll get hit with, with maybe somebody swinging on the swing, something like that. But with the, uh, the help of these mothers and these other volunteers who come around, people who come around and work, we've, we've cut it down to a minimum. In fact, we haven't reported any, any incidents at all of any type of accident. 